Today we're in the Shank Process Test Centre here in Bristol, PA. This is our sifting, screening, milling and blending test centre where we demonstrate our range of sieving and size reduction equipment. The types of equipment we have here are our centrifugal sifters, um, vibratory and tumbler screeners, our kibbler pre-breakers, cone mills, our universal mills, which can be either pin or turbine and screen mills, and our range of air classifier mills. Today, we are going to be specifically talking about our air classifier milling systems. Now, this type of milling system is a little bit different than, uh, say, a cone mill, a hammer mill, or a universal type mill system, as those mills are all what we would term a one-pass milling system. In other words, you have one chance to mill the product down to size, and as soon as it leaves the grinding media, any product that's not in specification would have to be sifted and recycled back to the mill for further processing. The air classifier is a little bit different. It's a multi-pass mill in that it internally recycles any unground material and then grinds it down to the correct particle size before it is discharged from the mill. Now this is truly a mill system and comprises many components. First thing you need is a feeder uh, to feed the product. In this case, we have a Schenk Process Mechatron Gravimetric Feeder. And then we pass through a airlock. So we have a Schenk Process airlock. Then the product is picked up and conveyed uh, in a vacuum conveying system into the air classifier mill here. The product then discharges with the air stream out of the mill. And in this case, we collect uh, the primary product off a cyclone. The airstream and uh, then carries on to a filter receiver, um, and then the product is cleaned, or the, the product, the dust is removed from the airstream before it is discharged to atmosphere. At the end of the system, there is an exhaust fan, and that exhaust fan is the motive source for the whole system. It sucks the product all the way from the inlet position here, all the way through to the cyclone and the filter. Now we're going to explain a little bit about how our classifier milling technology works. What we have here is one of our 1CMT classifier mills. The way this works is we basically have a main air intake here where approximately 80% of the airflow into the mill comes. Then over here, we will have the product uh, then being conveyed into the mill here. And this will take about approximately 20% of the airflow into the mill. Inside the mill, we have a high-speed rotor typically fitted with either pins or bar hammers as the grinding media. Outside of that rotor, there is a stationary liner or grinding track where the product is impacted and ground down to size. Now all that product and air then conveys the product up and over and then it is presented to a classifier. And the classifier is spinning independently of the rotor and the speeds can be adjusted on each device. If the product is fine enough, it can pass through the classifier and discharge out through the pipe here. So the two air streams and the product all recombine together in this discharge here. Now we're going to open the mill up and explain a little bit about what's happening inside the mill. Before I do that, one thing I should point out is these mills have very high speed rotating components in them. And therefore the mills are usually fitted with either a time delay or solenoid type locking safety um, interlock on the mill to prevent you from opening the mill and accessing these high-speed rotating components before they have come to a complete stop and that it is safe to open the mill. In this case, to open this mill, it's very simple. I'm just gonna undo these hand wheels and gently lift the lid open. On some of the larger mills, they will have a gearbox, typically with a hand wheel or hand lever uh, crank to open it. And on even some of the larger mills still that are very, very big and very heavy, they will actually have a uh, motor driven gearbox to raise the lid automatically. Now we have the mill open. What we're looking at here, um, here is the, what we call the baffle shroud around the outside. Inside here, we have the classifier wheel. And then down below, uh, we have the rotor, in this case fitted with bar hammers and a liner. Um, this mill um, is a clamshell design unit, so I'm going to open it up so you can actually see the internals of the mill. So now we see the, uh, 
internal components of the mill. And what basically happens is the product's coming in and the rotor is smashing the particles against the liner around the outside of the mill. The particles then convey up and these, these guides here basically guide the product up. They turn through 180 degrees and come down the opposite side and are presented to the classifier wheel here. Now, if the particles are moving fast enough, they can get through the gap between the classifier blades in the airstream and exit the mill. The way the mill actually classifies is that the larger particles with more mass are moving more slowly in the airstream. Therefore, they're not moving quickly enough to get past the blade without being contacted by the next blade along. When that happens, the particle is rejected and will flow downwards and then underneath the baffle shroud and back out to the rotor. And then it is reground again on the grinding track. Now this is happening very, very quickly. And a particle could go around that loop 20, 30, 40 times in a matter of a couple of seconds until it's ground down to size and then it exits from the mill. So now I'm gonna lift the baffle shroud out and we can now see the classifier and rotor. Now these are both independently driven. So it's a coaxial bearing, a shaft within a shaft, but they, the, the rotor and the classifier have totally independent drives and we can adjust the speed of both of them as we require. One thing I should point out is this is our test center mill and it is a industrial grade unit for milling all sorts of different materials. We manufacture these mills in full food grade, 304, 316 stainless steel, and we do full USDA sanitary grade mills and pharmaceutical grade mills. So we can build this to whatever surface finish and hygienic requirements the customer needs. So now I'm going to explain a little bit about some of the internal components inside the classifier mill. At the bottom here, we have the rotor. In this case, the rotor is fitted with bar hammers. These are typically used when we're looking for a high impact. So if we're looking to grind something fine and we want to hit it as hard and uh, as strongly as possible, we will typically fit these bar hammers. If we have a product that's maybe a little heat sensitive and um, maybe the bar hammers would provide a little bit too much energy and possibly cause some localized heating or melting, then we may switch to what we call the pin hammers. So there'll be a series of small pins around the outside of this rotor. They still provide quite an intensive grinding action, but it's not as intense as the bar hammers. The next thing we can adjust within the mill is the classifier wheel. In this case, we have what we call a medium blade radial classifier, and that's our typical sort of default position when we start testing a new material. Now, if we're not able to get the particles fine enough using this classifier, then we can switch to different options. For example, we could switch to a classifier like this, and this is basically a medium blade tangential classifier. So the, the blades are angled. It's a little bit more restrictive, a little bit more difficult for the particles to pass through the classifier uh, without being impacted and return to the grinding media. However, if even that classifier doesn't get it fine enough, we can switch to maybe something like this one. And this is what we would term a long blade tangential classifier and this will cut much, much finer. Now, it's actually a little bit counterintuitive in that when you sort of look at these, you tend to think that the shallower blades that are, have a smaller opening look a little bit more restrictive, but it's actually not the case. What we're trying to do here with the long blade classifier is slow down the airflow across the classifier. So by opening up uh, the flow path, we're actually slowing the airflow down. Therefore, there is a much higher probability that a particle that's trying to pass through the blades will be contacted by a blade, rejected and returned to the rotor and liner for further grinding. Now I'd like to take the opportunity to explain a little bit about some of the individual components of the system. But I think it's also important to point out that should you buy a, a milling system from Schenk Process, then we are kind of unique in that we truly are a one-stop shop. So if you buy a system from us, you're going to get a Schenk feeder, a Schenk airlock, a Schenk mill, Schenk cyclone, Schenk filter, and Schenk control panel, built in our own UL panel shop. We will also project manage the whole system. We will ensure that all the local codes, such as OSHA, NFPA, 
ATEX are met. So here in the US, we would need to comply with NFPA um, explosion protection requirements. Over in Europe, we would need to comply with ATEX and CE marking. Now, initially the system is fed by a Schenk process Mechatron feeder. In this case, this is a gravimetric feeder to provide an accurate feed rate into the mill. It is important that the feed rate is accurately controlled to ensure that we get a consistent grind and finished particle size from the mill. If the feed rate is highly variable, it's also likely that the finished particle size will be variable. After passing through the feeder, the product then drops through uh, an airlock here and then into the conveying line into the mill. This is also a Schenk airlock. After passing through the mill, in this case, we're going on to a uh, Cyclone as our primary collection device. Again, this will be designed and built in-house by Schenk Process. Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the safety features. So in this particular system, the product has passed through the Cyclone and now there is some residual dust and the airstream passing down this pipe work. Then passes down this pipe work onto the filter receiver here for final secondary filtration before the air is discharged into the atmosphere. Now, one of the things we have to do to comply with some of the safety regulations, so here in North America, we need to comply with NFPA and we need to prevent any explosions propagating back towards the mill and other equipment. So here we have a barrier valve in the pipework and then further down the pipework in the filter receiver, there is a sensor. That sensor will detect any explosion and the pressure wave and send a signal to close this valve before the pressure wave and flame front reaches this point. Inside the filter, there is a explosion rupture disc, which is set to go at a low pressure. And then the explosion would then relieve out through this panel on the top. In this case, because we are venting inside the building, we have what's called a flameless vent. So it basically would just produce a puff of smoke and prevents any flames emitting into the atmosphere. In Europe, we would apply similar technology, but in that case, we would be making sure that it was ATEX compliant. Now I'd like to uh, discuss a little bit about the applications and where we use our classifier milling technology. We sell these milling systems into the chemical industry, um, the plastics industry, the powder paint industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and the food industry. So for chemicals, it may be something like a pigment um, or some kind of mineral. Um, into the food industry, typical applications would be something like a sugar, bicarbonate of the soda, salt, wheat gluten, um, even um, dairy ingredients such as lactose and whey powders. For today's demonstration, what we're going to do is to mill some sugar to produce some grades of powdered sugar. These are typically available commercially as what would be described as a 6x, 10x or 12x sugar. 6x is typically described as something like 95 to 98% passing 106 micron. A 10x sugar will be something like uh, 95 to 98% passing 75 micron. And the finer grade 12x sugar, something like 95 to 98% passing 45 micron. For today's demonstration, we're just going to be milling pure white sugar on its own. And that's okay if you were going to use the sugar immediately, but powdered sugar is very hygroscopic and it can easily re-agglomerate and create lumps. So if you're not going to use the sugar immediately or you're going to package it and then maybe sell it on um, uh, to other people, then you would normally add some sort of flow agent, typically cornstarch. And what you would do is you would typically add maybe two to three percent cornstarch, 97, 98 percent pure sugar. Now at Schenk Process, because we have our range of uh, Mechatron gravimetric feeders, we can actually put two feeders together um, and accurately feed both ingredients into the mill simultaneously while maintaining a carefully calibrated ratio between the two feeders. This will give you a accurate um, feed rate, an accurate and consistent particle size, as well as a homogeneous, fully blended product. Now we're going to analyze the powdered sugar samples we produced on the classifier mill. Now to do that, 
Um, traditionally, you may have used a sieve screen or something like that, a series of sieve screens. Unfortunately, because this powder is now really very fine, you can't use traditional sieve screens like this and get an accurate result. So what we're going to use is our laser diffraction analyzer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is load the samples in, and run them through the analyzer, and it will then produce a particle size distribution curve for the milled product.